Hi, it's Alex from LaughingPlace.com here today with a video review of the one and only Ivan coming to Disney Plus on Friday, August 21st. The film tells the story of Ivan, a silverback gorilla who grew up in captivity with a human named Mac, who's played by Brian Cranston. And Brian Cranston's character owns a little strip mall called the Big Top Strip Mall. And it's called that because he has a little circus act. And Ivan is the biggest star of the act. It also includes a seal, an elephant named Stella, um, a bunny who drives a a little fire truck, a chicken who plays basketball or baseball, and um, and then there's a parrot that talks. And uh, all of the animals kind of converse with themselves backstage, but the humans don't know they talk. So it's sort of a talking animal movie, but not in the kind of traditional sense. The humans aren't able to hear the animals talk. And sort of the inciting incident for the story that's based on a Newbery Medal award-winning book is um, that a, a new baby elephant joins the crew because the older elephant, Stella, who's voiced by producer Angelina Jolie, um, is getting very old and having a hard time performing. So um, this new young elephant, Ruby, comes in and she is just full of questions about what the wild is like um, and always wants to hear stories and that sort of prompts Ivan to start to remember his past, his, his time before um, joining Mac in the human world and he sort of makes a promise that he's going to help Ruby become free. And so the gateway to that is um, there's a little girl who's played by Ariana Greenblatt from Disney Channel and um, she's the daughter of one of the animal caretakers at the circus. She gives Ivan some crayons and he starts to draw and the things that he begins to draw are things that he remembers um, from his time in the wild. And eventually the public uh, picks up on that, on what Ivan is trying to say through his drawings. And um, so that's really where the story goes. Now it's based on a true story. And one of the things that I really love that the film does is um, the, the novel that inspired the film is very much fictionalized, um, you know, takes the inspiration from the true story, but um, doesn't really represent it. At the end, there's an epilogue, so sort of right before the credits start to play. Um, you don't have to necessarily go searching for the information. Disney gives it to you, which I love that they did that. Um, there is also a post-credit tag, so uh, just be on the lookout for that if you love the little Easter eggs that come at the end of the credits. Disney Plus always likes to bump everything over to the side and tell you to watch something else, um, but uh, ignore that. Click the, um, you swipe over, you click the screen again, and it'll make the credits full screen, and you can stay all the way through the and, and see that if you want to. Now, the film um, has heavily promoted its all-star voice cast. Obviously, Brian Cranston is a big deal. Um, he's the biggest sort of on-screen talent, um, but Sam Rockwell voices Ivan. Um, I know him uh, most recently from Fosse Verde and an FX show that was fantastic. As I mentioned, Annalena Jolie, she's not only a producer on this, but she's the voice of Stella. And through a virtual press conference that they had, what was interesting was the film was already in development. One of her kids read the book and fell in love with it and made her aware of it. And she thought it was so special that she wanted to be involved in whatever came of its journey to the screen. And so she sort of sought, sought the project out, um, which I thought was really cool. And um, Danny DeVito plays Bob the dog. Um, he's obviously a big deal uh, for a number of reasons, but for Disney fans, he's the voice of Philatides in Hercules. Uh, he was also most recently in Tim Burton's Dumbo. And with the Fox acquisition, he's on FX's It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Helen Mirren, um, a screen legend, <laughs> she's a, a voice of a poodle and her role is one of the smallest of the animal characters. You really don't see her character much, um, but but that's Helen Mirren, which is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, Ruby, the young baby elephant, she's voiced by an actress named Brooklyn Prince. She's a, a child herself, so they actually went for type rather than getting an adult who could sound like a child. And one of the fun stories that came out of that uh, press junket was that she and Angela Angelina Jolie wore elephant onesies when they did their recordings together as Stella and Ruby. Um, so that's kind of fun. You obviously aren't supposed to think about that when you're watching the film, um, but that's just kind of a fun little note that uh, they did that. And um, Shaka Khan, a uh, music legend, she voices uh, Henrietta the Chicken who plays baseball. And um, in terms of like the humor of the film, because obviously, uh, it's, it's whimsical in, in that it's a talking animal movie, but actually the themes are quite heavy. Um, and that's really the one problem that I had with it is I don't feel like they nailed the humor 
in the correct way in such a way that it appeals to a really wide audience. The humor, for the most part, is pretty kid focused. Um, the one exception that's pretty obvious to me is there's a Chaka Khan inside joke. So if you're a fan of her um, discography, uh, you'll pick up on that. If not, you might not notice it if you if you aren't familiar with, with Shaka Khan's music. Um, the other joke that kind of plays well to both adults and children is, are some of the things that Danny DeVito's character Bob um, says just in terms of his like perception of the human world. Um, the one thing I will say is being that the jokes do skew more for laughs from the younger audience is they never resort to um, fart jokes or poop jokes, which most talking animal movies have at least one. Even one of my favorite movies Disney's ever made, Enchanted, has a poop joke from the talking animal character that's in it con consistently, Pip, the, the chipmunk. So um, they never stoop to kind of those low tricks for laughs. It's just the things that are meant to be funny are really mostly only funny for kids. Um, it doesn't make the film bad in any way, um, but what it does as an adult viewer is you you understand and absorb the full weight and impact of the story. And for me, there wasn't enough lighthearted um, moments of comedy to kind of balance it out. You know, um, Walt Disney had this philosophy that for every down, you have to have an equal up. And that's the one thing I will say about One and Only Ivan is it has a lot of downs. I don't feel it has enough equal ups um, to balance that out. Other than that, I thought it was a fantastic film. Obviously, it's great for families. This was originally meant to go to theaters as well. We're getting it on Disney Plus in August, but originally this was going to be a Disney theatrical um, release in August, and they made that change sort of towards late spring um, and announced that this one was coming uh, straight to Disney+. Plus. Um, it's not like Mulan, uh, which is coming in September, where there is a surcharge short in order to be able to see it um, kind of with the world in that moment until a certain date when it'll go on Disney+, Plus for everyone. So this is just Friday, August 21st, brand new Disney movie, uh, talking animal movie, originally intended to go to theaters. And the other thing I will say too is obviously the film has a message of animal rights and where wild animals really belong in the world and um, they were very careful not to really use animals in the film. So Ivan, Stella, Ruby, um, all of these wild animal characters, they're played by um, computers. <laughs> it's a computer animated character uh, with a celebrity voice and they used a human stand-in on the set um, basically like they did for Gollum way back in Lord of the Rings. But again, I really enjoyed the film and you can catch it Friday, August 21st on Disney+. Plus. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.